Hello and welcome to Star Citizen Sunday with me, Ryan, aka Sifu Messiah. This is a weekly show which covers everything from the world of Star Citizen over the past week. Links can be found in the description for anything we discuss during the show, so let's get on with it. So this week there are 10 new questions answered by Chris Roberts himself. Around the verse as always, we reveal the winner of the Mustang Delta and we take an excruciating close look at the Moby Glass. It's going to be a long one, so stay tuned. So, as always, we kick off with 10 for the Chairman. Chris was back again in episode 51. Very good questions. I think I did include them all. Some of them we have had already, so it's, again, a good refresher. But the first question, which is something we have discussed a way back when, and it had a big, big debate. I think it was the most talked about question we've had on Star Citizen Sunday. And it was regarding food, sleep, and showering. And what plan Chris Roberts has for this to play in the Persistent Universe. Now, you know, I, I like the idea of it. A lot of people don't because they don't want it to take away from the fun gameplay. A lot of people think it'll take too too much time away from it. A big debate about it, and it was very interested in hearing people's thoughts, but they were generally 50-50. It was a god goddamn mix across the whole board. So Chris has explained pretty much, not 100% as it's going to be, but he did clarify quite a bit. So, as you know, the ships contain sleeping quarters, there's a table in the con constellations, and the way he wants things like food, sleep, and showering, because it is quite, quite a realistic game, or a very realistic game, he wants there to be a light immersion he says with these 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 ideas now he doesn't want it to be you have to eat you have to sleep you have to shower otherwise you're gonna die and so forth it's more like showering will sort of in a way when you're walking around another town or a city then if you don't shower for two weeks or however long then the P the npcs will look at you and maybe pull a face or you know make a passing comment to how much you smell and it'll do like an like if it's a traditional rpg um do like a tradition like a normal sort of minus one on your reputation skill or something along those lines. Now sleep, we know the beds are in the ships because when you are in space and you want to save the game and exit, you would do that by sleeping. Once you get into your bunk, you could, you'll have the option to save it and then you can exit safely and then when you want to restart, respawn into your game, you can then you will restart in your bed. And, and again, it's pretty cool. So that's quite a normal function for the bed. You can see why it works with the fictitious idea of, of getting out and in and out of the game. But also it may give you maybe some sort of boost in stamina or, or awareness or some something along those lines. But food, again, it's not necessary. You're not going to have to eat four square meals a day and keep up with them. You, you, it's going to be more like if you choose to have a have a meal, then it'll maybe do a, a plus bonus again on something like stamina or health or, you know, maybe like Grand Theft Auto, you can probably regenerate your health. So there will be reasons to, but there won't be the necessity to. So you can, you can do it if you want. And I know I will, if I are really into the immersion of it and I really want to just spend a couple of hours just pretending it's actually me on my ship then I would probably go about and do that sort of thing but then yes if I feel like I'm going to go into a battle I'll think right everyone gather around while we discuss the the you know the mission at hand and let's have something to eat let's get prepared and get our boost our stats as much as possible so I think the way he's, he's he's answered this is pretty good it's it balances it out so the people who don't want to do it at all don't have to and if they really you know think they might benefit from doing it then you can just do it once and you don't have to do it again for another few few days, hours, weeks, whatever. But anyway, next question. Again, tell me your thoughts on that. We'll keep this debate open. Are you happy with that? Do you think there just shouldn't be any at all? Let me, tell me your thoughts. So next question is, would we be able to capture, decrypt, or interrogate the info drones from, you know, the, the, the drones that go in between the jump points, sort of jump point runners that carry information through jump points to the other side to, uh, to you know, to the to the recipients. Um, and also, can you catch and release them so the recipients don't know that you have, have the information and then maybe sell the info on a, on a certain market and Chris Roberts says yes definitely there will be a big fo it'll be a big focus of the info agent or the info runners business profession for the persistent universe so it's again it's going to be like being a medic being a, a bounty hunter you know being the info agent or runner is going to be a completely side so career in a way so you know there will be again the interesting thing about this is there's two sides to it there isn't just being an info runner and stopping things from getting to the destinations and then decrypting them to find out the message and then maybe selling them or just passing them back on to someone else there's going to be the other side of trying to get your messages to you know maybe if you're a good at encrypting these messages i don't know how in depth it'll be then you can be paid to send information with a really good encryption so it's really difficult for the average person to decrypt them but again you can be paid to intercept them you can be paid to send them so there's, there's going to be a lot for there and you could become quite a specialist in this area and if you get a good name for yourself make yourself a lot of uec while doing it really cool so question number three 
Any plans for the larger ships, example Karak, sorry, or the Starfarer, to be hangar ready by, well, within 2015? Now, unfortunately, I only really mentioned the Karak and the Starfarer, but I think the question was referring to the majority of the ships that we are waiting for. Because it just it just say the Starfarer is yes, and we know this because Squadron 42, we have been told the Starfarer will feature very heavily in the first episode of Squadron 42, so that will be ready before that needs to be released, which is before the end of 2015. The Karak, he is unsure and has to look up the ship schedule to tell us. Now, he did mention during this post that the Retaliator will be coming soon. It is their first multi-crew ship that they're using for that purpose. So that will come ready for 2.0, if not before. So hopefully it'll be hangar ready before and we get to have a look around it and explore it before the 2.0 comes out. So he did actually mention during this post that they are looking for vehicle modelers. So if there's any of you out there that are, that are qualified vehicle modelers, they are in desperate need for them because everyone is swamped. So if, if that's you, get in contact with them. I think there is a, a link for joining up for a job with Star Citizen. I'll, I'll see if I can find it and, and put it in the description below. If it isn't there, I apologise. It just means I, I didn't find it, basically. So, next question. If you're flying with a squadron or a group of friends, can you enter a jump point together or will it have to be one at a time? And Chris explains that they've not fully figured it out yet. The way it'll work is, obviously, we're dealing with instances. So if, if you're in a group and one of, you, one of your squadron flies through to the other side, you fly through separately, you may end up in a different instance. Now, the way it'll work is you'll link up with your squad leader and if everyone's done that, then whatever jump point he goes through, you will all travel through the same one. Maybe not at the same time, but possibly as... As I say, they haven't figured it out. They're still prototyping and working on it. But yeah, that's basically the challenge they find. So again, it may depend on the size of the jump point. Some of them are small, which may just be one ships only. Some of them are bigger. So potentially they may have, but we don't know yet. So the question after that was, will our missiles be able to lock onto specific ship points? For example, the engine or the cockpit on capital ships? And the answer is yes. Bigger ships will have subcomponent targeting and you can lock onto things like gun turrets, etc. So this will really play well in the position universe. I don't know how it would work with single fighter ships. I would have thought it would be the same concept. If you're a single fighter and you're flying past a capital ship and you have your missiles selected, you will be able to lock onto maybe turrets, the engines, the communications. Because I think really one of the biggest things which will help win a battle is if you're against a larger ship and you can see their comms array, take it out. Just destroy that comm array because they will not be able to contact any of their fleet or any of their friends to come and help them. Or even the police, you know, the, the law enforcement. So hopefully even the smaller ships will be able to target so you can assign goals to your real players or NPC fighter players to target these specific areas so you're not all just flying in trying to shoot shit out of everyone you can actually have a, an organized squadron battle which would be really really cool so question after that how will backpacks or kits etc work and so if you don't know we we know there's going to be backpacks and so forth in the position universe you know you use so many clothing accessories which we've seen on the Moby glass when they showed us the shopping app where you can see all the different types of hats and basically Chris Roberts says that yes 100% the cargo pants for example will have two pockets which will be a small inventory so there'll only be a, a small amount of space but they'll also be for small items so for example to explain it probably a bit better is a backpack maybe has a capacity for 10 items of size 2 or less so there'll be different sized items which can fit into your backpack so it may be a backpack has a size 10 if you have one size 10 item which could be fuck knows a bazooka which he has said it's probably not confirmed as a bazooka so don't don't take that for gospel then that would fit in your backpack whereas obviously if you had three or four handguns which were say size size two then you can fit five handguns in so it kind of makes sense and it's a good way of doing it so it'll feel realistic he also says that what you are carrying will be visible on your body so i mean obviously unless it's in in your, in your pocket or in your backpack if you're if you have accessories to carry things or maybe carabiners or whatever you'll have them displayed on your body when you have them so again this will be handy if you can see someone with a grenade on their chest and you're fighting against them you will know that he has a grenade available whereas obviously you're playing things like call of duty the the garb that you are wear is just a placeholder to make it look cool it doesn't matter if you know you have 10 grenades on you or not so also he mentions that when wearing a backpack you may they haven't fully fleshed it out yet but you may be running slower um, and also you might not be able to sit in a fighter seat so if you were going to go into a fighter you would have to remove the back really cool very immersive so a question after that in addition to skills that must be acquired by players such as 
ship piloting? Will there be any character-based skills or perks such as speaking alien languages? And Chris says that there's more focus on flight skills, for example, and getting equipment to help with that. So, you know, equipment for your ship and for your helmets and so forth. But there's not going to be traditional skills for for players. It's not going to be like a certain, you know, you, you have a, a five in this skill. And you can, by doing this, you'll up that level to six and then constantly be able to do that at the six. It is very much going to be basically, you know, the player gets better by practicing and learning, which is really good because it'll determine what role you do play in the persistent universe. Yes, it may be frustrating for people like i i am not the best fighter pilot in at all so if i go into the to the pu and I'm, I'm not looking to do much fighting which is lucky but if i get into trouble i may get frustrated with myself because i'm not a good fighter pilot so again i may have to spend more money on better equipment like better targeting equipment better things for my visors to make me a better pilot in a way so or to assist me really but npc characters will have ratings like morale aggression accuracy etc etc and that will build up those characters for aliens these he doesn't think there's going to be like a translation thing that you you'll learn how to speak them he says that you will i know when they did say they're going to get a linguist in to make these alien languages real alien languages well not real but you know what i mean that you will be able to learn them but it's not going to be like a perk on your character it is it's it's, they're going to have something like a future google translate so you may never need to really learn the alien language but i think they did say it would be possible which is pretty cool so the next question after that was how will player to player sales work will you browse a player's inventory through your mobile ass or Will you be able to buy a storefront and sell that way? And longer term, Chris says that, yes, buying a storefront will be possible. You know, you can travel the galaxy, collecting all different kinds of stuff from everywhere and open like a little shop, like a bazaar or something, and just have that where people can come and buy things from you that you've collected. Because obviously things like weapons and ships and all these sort of things are your main focus of of payment and buying and selling and things but there are going to be little neclectic things that you can collect like trinkets snow globes all these bit little bits that will just make up and make the, the, the universe a lot more diverse so he did say that the banu merchantman if you haven't seen it i'll put a picture up now Woo. um which you if you own one of them it's a major major trade ship because the banu are renowned for their tradesman craft if that's a word trade craft trade. anyway so you can land on a planet with your banu merchantman and set up shop or land anywhere and set up shop which will be really cool i mean can you just imagine being planet side and this huge banu merchantman just coming down and landing in an area where it is designated for trade traders to to sell and everyone just thinking right let's go and see what he's got and it did say that you know that if you've seen some pictures there is a room in like um i suppose it's like a barter room i can't think of the word i think it begins with g but where you would go in and you ne- oh, negotiations room that's one doesn't begin with g at all where you'd go and negotiate the prices but this room has a big table and it overlooks the cargo hole so while you're in your ship if you own a banu merchantman if you've got all these people People coming in saying i'm interested in that hornet you've got in your in your cargo hold you can start negotiating prices really really cool and again a very very in-depth mechanic just for trading you know he did say also there's going to be like a persistent universe craigslist where you can put up i have this i would like to sell it someone contacts you then you meet in the pu somewhere you make you know you arrange to meet then you transfer it so again this could be a target for pirates they could say i'll meet you here and then have a team waiting to you know a bunch of pirates waiting to to jump this person trying to sell stuff and then you would have to obviously hire mercenaries to protect yourself or you'd have to meet in a public area where people aren't gonna basically start a fight with you a lot has got to be thought of when you're just trading with people so the question after that is can a capital ship extend its shields around a docked or connected ship to provide additional protection and chris says probably not capital ships and smaller ships will have their own shields the projectors from the capital ship shields just won't have knowledge that that ship's there so it's not looking like it's possible if you were really hoping for that i'm sorry not gonna happen but it makes perfect sense so the final question will it be possible to lock bulkheads in your ship to make boarding attempts more difficult maybe decompressorizing or recompressorizing compartments to fight back now that a good question and we have had this one before a long long while ago and yes to both you can lock down bulkheads when you if you are in your cockpit and say you have a bigger ship bigger like maybe a carrack and you're in your cockpit and you hit you have an alarm saying you're getting boarded they are in the cargo hold you can then trap them in there um which would then they would have to try and decrypt the door to try and get out and then you can turn off the gravity to that area so they will struggle trying to maneuver around and then when you're ready you can manage a team to get ready to take them out and also they can actually probably disrupt things like maybe plant explosives in a certain area of the ship to cause damage so like if they've got on board without anyone knowing they could probably set off an explosion in your ship you would be like what the fuck was that send someone to go and have a look hold the person at ransom to try there's so much that we can do with this you know you could even just take them out get 
I don't know, take them out one at a time by getting people to be going down and looking for the people that you've just taken out. I'm probably making no sense, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you've understood up to a certain point, so I'll just move on. Actually, there's nothing to move on to, so that was it for Tim for the Chairman. Some really good questions, which have definitely opened my eyes to some more gameplay mechanics, so please tell me your thoughts, tell me what you think, tell me what you're excited for out of these questions, tell me what would work, tell me what won't work. Let me know. Okay, so there was a new Around the Verse, this time episode 29, with Sandy and Ben back in the usual spot, as as we like and know. So, news from Around the Verse, starting with Arena Commander. The landing gear animation fixed on several ships. So, when you are landing in Arena Commander, particularly, you know, if, you're, if you find those little landing pads, you start going down slowly, keep pressing your F key to level yourself down, you will see the landing gear open up nice and smoothly. I've just hopefully put up a 315p reviewed this week and you can see it working there really nice the fuel system has been added to missiles as we know and they now appear on your on your radar on your sensor the 300 the 350r the origin 350r thrusters have been adjusted they didn't go into specifications about this but i assume they have been adjusted so squadron 42 conversation system proof of concept is ongoing and this is the the way they're gonna we're gonna talk to npcs it will be better than mass effect they say and it'll be a really really good system that is of this era so it should be right up to date so there's three more vandal ships in concept phase i'm not sure which ones they are they have given us some names but they didn't specify this time so outlooting code is ongoing and this is for the fps module it's picking up and dropping weapons etc you know looting bodies and so forth so they're working on that right now so in the persistent universe concept work for anthony tanaka statue on nyx is completed and i'll show you a little picture of who anthony tanaka is no idea who he is but he's obviously something quite relevant to to the nyx system and it looks like he's got a little hammer mining hammer so i assume he was one of the maybe he was one of the miners that revolted didn't they all revolt or something i don't know we should probably check that out before i start talking about it so as you can probably see from the version 1.0.1 the buggy skins have been released now these are different paint jobs for your buggies and it is apparently the same paint tech that they use for the buggies that they'll use for all the ships so I, I am working on currently a 1.0.1 patch review just so you can see what was implemented within that patch and you'll see all the different types of buggy skins. Very, very cool. They did say that there's more buggy skins to come so we shall all be able to start buying paint jobs for our ships as well soon, I expect. So the chat UI is being designed and mocked up and, the, and Ben said that hopefully this will stop people switching to another client. So I really... I had a thought about this myself. A lot of people, when they play games online, they obviously use Skype or TeamSpeak and things like this, different clients, which obviously make it difficult in a world where you are populated with a lot of other people, where you should be able to hear them talking, but because they're on a different client, you can't hear them. So I did hope that people wouldn't use TeamSpeak. And a lot of people have said, well, there's no way they're going to stop it because it's the people's own prerogative. And it is. I don't think they'll take out the whole option to use it. But take, it's probably a bad example, but take Destiny, for example. When you play Destiny, I don't know if any of you have played it, the voice and the sound of your teammates as you go into a cave, it all changes, it gets more echoey, it sounds brilliant and it sounds so immersive. And we know that Star Citizen are using this type of voice over IP where if you are wearing a helmet, it'll muffle your voice, it'll be directional. A lot like Acre from, from the Armour series, the mod Acre, it's, it's going to be like that and it's going to be hopefully that people will not want to go to a different client. I really hope so anyway, but anyway, moving on. Ships. So, multiple Vandal ships continued in the grey boxing phase, and this is not the three that have just been started concepting. Now, I believe these will be the five ships that we've heard of. I think we've got like something like the Marauder, the Glaive, and all these sort of different ships. They are in grey boxing, so it means there may be another additional three being concepted. So, there's going to be a huge Vandal fleet. So, new damage tech has been implemented for the Gladiator and the Gladius. They are switching all the damage states over to a different form. I'm not sure what they exactly mean, because it's techie stuff that I really don't understand, but... I think they're changing all the damage states, so this is why we haven't seen any, this is what Ben said, this is why we haven't seen any new ships in the hangar module yet. So it sounds like the Gladiator and the Gladius just need to get these damage states completed and then they are in the hangar. Well, sorry, not in the hangar, the, we already know they are in the hangar, but they'll be flight ready, which is awesome news. So the Bulldog, which we heard is, is now, I think, either being concepted or white boxing or something along those lines, it has now changed its name and it's called the Vanguard. So if you were looking forward to that ship, no longer referred to it as the uh, as the bulldog because it's now the vanguard so fps the sniper rifle model has had its first art pass and it will be the same level of quality as the handgun we have seen released again 1.0.1 i'll show you the handgun but i have put a little clip in it in the 3.0 
point. Three point. In the, um, I wish it was three point oh. In the three fifteen p little review. So you get to see that if you haven't seen it yet. Animation for gravity generators have been fixed. And this is the, the gravity generator we saw in the FPS demo where a man ran off and shut off gravity. So it's the animation of using that. Not exactly sure if it's the animation of switching it on and off or if it's just the animation of that actual gravity generator itself. We shall see. The battle arena has received texture pass on exterior of the station. So the battle arena, as we know, is a huge, huge space station where you can go inside and fight out in this zero G environment. Very, very, very much like Ended Game from the pictures. It looks pretty much identical. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's a good film. But I'll show you a picture of the of the battle arena if I haven't already. And it is looking like a really cool part of the game or part of Arena Commander. So we went over to Mark from Bug Smashers. And the bug that he fixed today was, well, that day was... We had recently a little recall on the Aurora model. So if you have an Aurora and you didn't notice this, you had you were available. It was last week that you were the three one of the 300 series was available for you to fly because, and it was really good. They created an in-fiction post of a proper recall of all the Auroras because they the guns were overheating and they couldn't figure out why it was to do with the latest patch. So Mark explains on this how he did that and how he fixed that patch or how he fixed that bug so we could use our auroras again without the the energy from the weapons just completely depleting and never recurring again or re recu recuperating again so we went over to the cs team and it was a merchandise update they have closed all pre-orders for your mustang mouse pads the squadron 42 t's and the second fleet of dog tags so they did say that the mustang mouse pads are ready to ship now and you should be getting a shipping notification within the next few weeks i have ordered some dog tags and i'm looking forward to getting them because i'm building quite a nice little shelf of of memorabilia from star citizen so the amd mustang omega package now if you don't know about this the mustang omega which is the the red and black racer from mustang that we saw it was only available if you bought it via an amd graphics card package so basically amd have said that they have restocked on codes and you can now redeem them so if you want one go out and get them okay so we went over to james Pugh, and we met with a ryan archer and a jenny varner now ryan archer is the marketing artist for the cig team and jenny varner is the community content manager and he had a little chat with them really nice interesting quite short and sweet but check it out if you're interested in all the team at cig it's always nice to meet new people so the most valuable post was from screwball who gave a list of all the songs and music for and by Star Citizens in original competition, composition, which, like he said, it was quite a mouthful. I'll put a link in the description if you want to know what it is. It should be all the songs and all the music that's available. So if you are interested in all the music from Star Citizen, you can check it out there. So after that, we had an interview. Well, Ben Lesnick had an interview instead of James Pugh because he was still in Austin with the co-founder of CIG, who is also the vice chairman, and he is called Ortwin Freyamuth. I really hope I pronounced that right. It was probably butchered, but I'm really sorry. And it was a really cool interview. He is obviously one of the people who founded CIG. So he's kind of a big wig in this, in this whole department. And without him, we may not be where we are now. So hats off to that guy. So after that, the, we went back to Ben and Sandy and they explained how PAX East and South by Southwest tickets are now, or oh, well, will be soon going on sale. So if you are in the area of PAX East and South by Southwest and you fancy going to the event, pick up one of the tickets. Uh, they should be on sale. Hopefully Hopefully within the next week, I think they said. So they've started a new contest. And if you're new to this, they, they often used to put up contests during around the around the verse where you could send in maybe a picture of something. I think we had a paint, paint scheme for the M50 once and you would win certain merchandise or whatever. Now, that what they've got for this is terror wraps which is a little fine art wrap or a print of terror and it looks kind of cool you know you can hang it on your hang it on your wall in your living room or in your office or wherever and to enter this competition or to win you have to come up with an idea for a shop within the persistent universe it can be any kind of shop you want it to be you have to just sort of use paint or photoshop to design the fascia or you know the interior or just give an impression of what sort of shop you can even draw it with a piece of chalk who cares put it up there if they like it then you you know you may win but they may show off some other ones as well so it's always good to be part of this always good to have a go so one of the final things i mentioned was that at the end of the week we should be getting the moby glass design post and it is going to be a full in-depth report about the moby glass i think it's from behavior so i'll explain all that's been happening with the moby glass and we can start to see it in in you know coming into the arena commander soon i i should hope so as always the sneak peek and this week it was for we weapon damage effects now we had three different types of weapon damage effects the first one was a light one the second one was a heavy one where the glow will fade out 
in version 0.21, no, sorry, 0.2, which apparently doesn't do it just yet. And the third one, which is really cool, is a hole cutting one. So you shoot your ship, it starts burning a hole through you, through the ship. Now this is really cool, and I was talking to someone on Twitter, and he was saying that it would be good, but obviously if you are trying to take this ship from someone and you shot that ship and started melting holes in it, then you've got to repair that ship, which could cost you quite dearly if, if you put too many holes in it, which is a very, very good point. But on the other hand, it may be useful if you are trying to breach into a door or into a cockpit of someone else's who is holding up there. It may just melt away the door. Pros and cons, I suppose, of futuristic weaponry. Anyway, that was it for Around the Verse. Let's move on. Okay, so there was a, a very, very huge and in-depth report about the Moby Glass. Now, this is to do with stretch goals. Now we're not getting ships to decide what we want to do with. We're getting these design posts and they are very in-depth. The first one was from Behaviour about the, the Moby Glass, so I shall have made some notes, so I shall read them all out to you. So, it is going to be compact and light. It comfortably attaches to your wrist. It's easy to use. It aug augments with life everywhere, all of the time. With the Moby Glass, it transforms the ordinary into microtech ordinary, which it is their product. So, like all microtech products, the new Moby Glass has stunning visual design that conjugates style style, power and usability without compromise. Now it is made by Microtech which is, if you look at the Stanton system, it is one of the four, Stanton one, the four big planets that are all specific to each company. So it features 2D and 3D images via a screen and a contact lens and the other player can see this screen. So other players in your vicinity, if they get close to you, can see this screen pop up. It's, it's really there but the important data is kept on your, your augmented reality contact lens which they cannot see, only you can see that and that is where the 3D images are shown as well. So it can connect to external devices such as ships and screens in the environment. And it says, imagine guild members in their hangar's conference room seamlessly exchanging information by flicking it from their Moby Glass to a giant screen. And again, if you own an address and you have that big conference room in the address, if you're trying to give a mission briefing, you can literally just use your arm, have the information there, flick it onto the screen and it'll all for everyone to see. Really cool. So the they did say they are influenced by Dead Space. And if you have played Dead Space, it is one of my favorite games and I do often relate back to to it in regards to what's going on in Star Citizen they have this sort of screen it's very much like what the Moby Glass is going to be like so if you've played it you can sort of get an, an idea of what I'm talking about here so it also says imagine exchanging information by showing your Moby Glass to another character or at an appropriate extreme spying on someone else's Moby Glass to steal sensitive information again it's sort of thing if you're tailing someone or if you see someone with their Moby Glass open and it says you know a bounty is here or treasure is left here or whatever you can you can get that information and go off and and get it before they do. So it says some establishments may jam or block your Moby Glass to avoid scanning patrons. So if you are a bounty hunter, it says try bounty hunting in these locations without the ability to get the names and IDs of people around. We always keep in mind the in-fiction parameters on how the Moby Glass screen system and augmented reality lens would work and they want to bring immersion and gameplay into the into the menu system. So again, going back to the whole bounty hunting thing, you can, you know, you can you can hold, hold the, the, the screen of the Moby glass up to a certain people if you walk into a bar you can hold it up and scan the room and see if they're if, they're, if your target is there basically so some places like some dive bars may stop you from doing that if you're in a pirate area you know pirated area they'll stop you from doing that so it gets a lot more difficult so they use something called a tag system which we'll hear about later which can connect to many components in the universe from players to other characters to the to even the little ship models that you get in your hangar and you can see all the information about them so it shows a picture i'll put it up now you see a billboard showing off a video commercial of a ship sale at astro armada and you activate your moby glass augmented reality mode to discover various holographic buttons floating right there beside the billboard so what you would do is then you would click on those buttons and it would activate the moby glass compass which is an app that will show you you know it's like a gps or show you how to get to this place and then you can access the Galactopedia network to get more information on the ship or to compare the ship stats with one of your own or you know through through the the Moby Glass Shipworks app. We'll talk about the apps later on. This is just an idea, like an example of how it could work. So Moby Glass is a microtech company, a, a product, sorry, whereas the apps are from other companies, very much like Apple made the iPhone. The apps are from independent companies, so it's going to be exactly the same as that. So Oculus Rift is definitely a device that will make the Moby Glass look particularly stunning, they say, and you can just imagine it will be 
gifts just in your face. It'll be as if you're there using this device. So I really cannot wait until the consumer version of the of Oculus Rift is available. Cannot wait for that. So Moby Glasses one on the arm, as we know, projecting a holographic screen with an AR display on contact lens, glasses, visor, or other screens. So whatever they decide. So if you buy a pair of glasses, they may be a type of glasses that can hold this information. And same with your visor. If you're in a, an EVA suit, the visor will do the same as the contact lens if you are not wearing the contact lens. So it says the, the Moby Glass as we present it is but the first and most widely used model of intelligent device you'll be able to use or you'll be able to own in the persistent universe and in squadron 42 so it's obviously plays a part in that as well just like ships we aim on building various models and series of the moby glass don't be surprised if a competitor to microtech appears with their own intelligent device introducing the type of competition we see amongst mobile phone devices today so you know it's not just going to be set to this one device which make you know if someone's making money out of something someone else is going to come along and try and make money as well so it's quite real to life. Different generations of Moby, Moby Glass will, will present different functionalities, performance and capacities. The goal here is not to limit some models, but rather give a wider array of functions to some models versus less varied, but more specialized functions in others. For example, the UEE Navy Moby Glass and the Advocacy Moby Glass are special models built for those organizations with specific apps, functionalities and access rights, which is really cool. So whatever role you are planning to play, a Moby Glass or the apps appropriated with this Moby Glass would coincide with that role and it would make your life so much easier. So, upgrading and improving your Moby Glass. You can modify or change your Moby Glass for another model as long as you can afford it and can find the model you want. Some are rare, it says, and the examples they give are Moby Glass, Moby Glass S, and Moby Glass Plus. I doubt they'll be the actual names, they're just playing on the Apple iPhone. So, again, upgrades throughout the years. I expect every year they'll launch a new one. You can go to these launches, who knows? It might be quite interesting. The first models available in the PU are the standard Moby Glass and the Exploration Moby Glass, which was awarded to all backers before the 42 million pledge goal. So if you pledge before we hit 42 million, then you will get, I think, the Exploration Moby Glass. I think the standard one is available for everyone, but the, the Exploration may be only available for 42 million pledges. Anyway, Explorer Class Moby Glass Rig. This is what they told us. This is the 40 million, 42 million stretch goal. The Explorer Class Moby Glass Rig. Every player who backed before we hit 42 million will start the game with their own visually distinctive Moby Glass Exo Glass, which can be used to access the observist at any time. This backer exclusive Moby Glass kit comes preloaded with additional galactic information that new players would originally would ordinarily need to explore or barter to fill out. It's our way of honoring the information you've collected about the Star Citizen universe through the RSI site and community over the past year. So if you don't get that, don't worry, you can still upgrade and collect the information yourself to have this info. So upgrading brings new or enhanced functionalities to the Moby Glass and some at a cost, either monetary or worse. So you can have special specialized scanners, you know, or shielding shells, etc, etc. The most diverse add-ons on the market are called Augment Chips. So there are four functionality groups to the Moby Glass. Group A is the essential foundations of the Moby Glass, like accessing your communications options. These appear even if the Moby Glass is damaged or it's a cheap version. There's Group B, which is advanced functions. They're not essential, more specific to a particular system, like a planetside map or radar functions. Group C is a specialized function. Super advanced features are to be used in very specific cases for example oh sorry for specific character profiles like like for example biometric scanners and group d is the extra functions which include things like themes and styles etc so these will depend on how well you can use them depending on the damage states which we mentioned in the first group a so just like when a character gets gets hurt you've got normal so in the normal state, the Moby Glass features all working apps perfectly, everything's fine. So after that, you get the hurt state, and in the hurt state, some functions are disabled and glitches can be experienced in the interface. Some group B functionalities are disabled, group C functionalities are mostly disabled. So three is damaged. In a damaged state, the advanced group, group C, such as the chip add-ons and the scanners cannot be used at all. Furthermore, the Moby Glass interface becomes very glitchy. Even more group B features are disabled. And and damage state number four is ruined. So in a ruined state, non-essential Moby Glass features are particularly useless and frequent glitches make it harder to use. So when damaged, it says you'll experience visual glitches with the Moby Glass and its augmented reality display effects, such as phasing, displacement, and color inversion could be used sporadically to illustrate a glitched interface. So if you can imagine you and your fire team enter a space station and you have a big battle and a lot of your team are down, there's only two of you left and you want to get out of there, you need to get out of there, but your Moby Glass has taken a few hits so it's going to be glitching around and you've got to try and make sure you can contact your ship in between all these glitching and the phase
fading. And it's, you're going to have this pressure, but it's going to feel realistic. And you've, you've got to have this pressure to try and get contact with your ship to bring in the ship or an extra fire team to help get you out of it. So that is really, really immersive. So interaction. Objects which can interact with Moby Glass have a range and angle of interaction. And as you can see from the picture, I'll keep this up while I explain it. So A, the hollow screen. The projected hollow screen, a holographic screen, takes 95% of the player's display space when open. The main screen is where the bulk of interactions are made in the Moby Glass and the main medium for on-screen interface. In case the players have no AI display devices, it can be used as the window frame to the augmented reality. So B, extended hollow screen. Some apps necessitate and extend panoramic view. I hope that made sense because it made no sense to me. C, close range AR. In AR, objects seen in their close range usually display low to no information as they are too close to render or to be read properly. In some situations, the special icon tells the player the object is too close. Being too close, zone C, to the object makes it unselectable. This is to ease the selection of components within the components, within other components. For example, a shot of whiskey on a table. The table itself is too close to be selected making it easier to select the shot glass basically. So D, mid-range AR. In AR the zone is the sweet spot where the object's full AR information and interactions are available. When the object stands inside the mid-range the object shows that it is selectable. At this range the player can select and interact with the object. So E, far range AR. In AR objects in their far range appear to be to show minimal information. The far range objects is information and feedback are disabled when mid-range objects are in front of them. In some contexts, long range can be infinite. I hope that made sense. So, using your Moby Glass. Your day starts with putting in your augmented reality contacts or display glasses, which automatically connect to your Moby Glass. Following a quick boot up sequence, the augmented reality interface is displayed. Now you have access to a massive amount of metadata found in the world just by looking at things around you. So, for instance, when shopping, rather than getting a big scroll list of all the items for sale like a traditional game interface, your shopping is done via Via the AR overlay over actual physical items. While entering a shop like Cubby Blast on ArtCore, your display shows off a connecting icon and boots the Moby Glass Easy Shop app AR interface, so it automatically does it as you walk into that shop. In this context, items available for purchase are shown and highlighted right there in the world with a little outlay with the addition of AR labels showing you the prices and the specs of these items, which is really cool. You can take and move objects around in the AR for various reasons. While shopping, you can pick up the AR version of a shelved item, effectively creating a new AR object with following labels that you could keep on the side for a quick comparison with other products elsewhere in the shop. So it's really, really cool, really efficient. So the Moby Glass Shipworks app is an app which you can customize ship loadouts directly on your ship using holographic representations of ship components which can then be grabbed and moved around. I and mean, again, we'll get onto the, the apps a little later. So there are gonna be limitations to objects using your AR. Um, for instance, information can be blocked or altered in many ways uh, and for various reasons. So below, I'll just read them out, are some various states, state, sort of status names and descriptions as to what they mean. So altered, the Moby Glass can be hacked to display deceitful information. Altered labels are hard to detect without proper equipment and appear as legit labels with altered information. So that's pretty cool. You can set it up so people don't see what you want them to see, what they want to see. Blocked. Blocked information is made unavailable by the user who owns the information. This is done in multiple ways using Moby Glass advanced features like jammers. Block labels don't appear at all and show the following label unavailable. So contextual. Contextual labels only appear to, the, to a user who's in the right context to see them or needs the information at a moment based on the context. For example, to normal folk, bounties only appear if they are currently if they currently own the bounty contract, but to a licensed bounty hunter with an appropriate app, all bounties are visible. So restricted, only members of the same faction as the restricted object player and of a of a certain clearance level equal to that or higher than the restricted level can get this data. So everyone else gets the following label which says restricted. So again, if you're on an org, you can set that up and unavailable sometimes there is no data available for the label to show in those cases the label doesn't appear at all plays the following unavailable so the basic controls of this AR is that it's it's necessary to access a lot of information and features 
but it doesn't have to be on all the time. So you don't have to have this augmented reality in your face the whole time, which is good. You can decide what your experience should be. While the AR display is off, some objects can be interacted with that automatically opens the Mobiglass AR display with the relevant filter on. So let's have a look at the apps. So the first one we have is the Mobiglass Home or MG.home, which is the home screen. Obviously, it's a customizable menu, access to the rest of the content. It's got dynamic app layout, location appropriate apps, prioritized, plus recently used and favorite. So very much like things like on the, the Apple iPhone or Windows 8 and so forth. So the next one is MG.alert center, and it's, it notifies you anytime your app receives new data or anytime any app of yours receives new data, pop-ups on your AI display so you can see what's happening in whatever situation you're in, and it can be customized on how to appear and when. So if you don't want it to happen, I expect you can just turn it off completely. Mobiglass Easy Shop or MG.EasyShop allows you to buy and sell things as you can expect from ships to handkerchiefs. To buy an item, use AI display with shopping filters on. You can see all relevant data to that item. Not all shops take advantage of this, of the, oh, sorry, of the augmented reality. Some have catalogs which you can browse using Mobiglass. So I guess different sort of quality shops, better quality shops will use the whole augmented reality, whereas lesser ones will probably not. So MG Cargo Manager. It lets you search and manage your entire inventory. It consolidates all cargo you have from your hangar, from the hangar warehouse to your ships, to your pant pockets, and it categorizes them into a database. It's an encyclopedia of your items basically and it provides tools needed to track, compare and manage. Very good. So the MG contacts, as you can imagine, it's a complete list of contactable entities you have met. It can be collected from the PU or added manually. It allows you to find, add, remove, ignore and block other characters. You can group, you can search, you can filter, you can find organizations, you can manage your contacts and you can hold players, NPCs, planets, corporations, organizations, all sorts. So it's everywhere. It's like a contact list. So MG scheduler, it's a planning app. So you can plan your missions, you have your contracts and your events, you have a mission log, you've got a appointments and shipping estimates you can add your own events and it has an automatic reminder so again these are all quite brief but i expect they'll elaborate more when time is right so mg hangar service so you, this allows you to upgrade or customize your hangar and modify ship placements among it just anything to do with the hangar basically so mg shipworks is an akin to the hollow table it's an engineering app and it's customize and swap loadouts on your ship direct access to repair refuel and rearm in your ship you can tag ship parts which you want to be serviced which is cool and you can review your power management configurations and cargo space. And it has full ship statistic reports with analysis damage stats of individual ship parts and your hull. So that is really important. So the next one is MG Skyline, which is basically a, a galactic map directory and navigational planner. As found in your ships, it's got the full star map to help you plan your route and it can sync with other apps to give info like market data or pirate sightings in a certain area or tourist must-sees, etc. It's like a, a, an atlas or a GPS. So the other one they told us about is a CBB Finance and this is everything about finance, economy and money. You can review previous or, or current transactions and you can get market data and the current and your current balance plus lots more now this is one hell of a post I haven't covered everything because some of it is not as exciting and it's more technical stuff which if you are truly interested read it it is a long post so make sure you've got some you've not got anything to do but it's definitely worth checking out anyway tell me your thoughts on this Moby Glass I love it and I really can't wait to get a hand on it. We should be able to play with it and to see how it works and give feedback before it becomes final product. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, so also this week there was a post in regards to fixing the Auroras, which as we know from last week's bug smashes, it explains how Mark Bent fixed the Aurora overheating issue where the weapons were not cooling down. Again, it was all to do with a recall that they did, so this post is just explaining what they, in fiction, fixed. Really interesting. We met another CIG dev, which is the Austin Studios director called John Erskine. So if you're interested in what he has to say, check them out. Now, there was a limited ship update, as we know, because of this VAT is coming in, well, it's in now, they have put all the limited ships available for purchase, which is why we have pretty much almost reached $72 million, which is insane. But they uh, they added a few more ships in, but it's but by now, by the time you're hearing this, it's over. They, uh, they are no longer for sale, I don't think. So there was a post in regards to PAX South, which happened over the last weekend, and it was the Persistent, U Persistent Universe Town Hall photographs. So all the photos they took while they were at Town Hall, it's just a few of them. Uh, I won't bother putting 
putting them up, but you can check them out there on the link just below, or you can go onto the Facebook and check them out there. There was a new showdown post called Sukosi Special Part 2, which I haven't even read the first one, so I can't tell you what it's like. So there was four really, really cool posts in regards to PAX South and their town hall presentations. One of them was presenting on stage with Tony Zurovec, Chris Roberts, and Mark Skelton, where they just explained a few brief points about the Persistent Universe and also about jump points, which we saw last week, the video. But this week there was also three other panels. The first one was in regards to the path that you are likely to choose, and it tells you some mechanics for different careers you can choose. Another one was A Living, Breathing World, which tells you all about, well, I've only seen half of that one so far, all about the, the world itself. And then the final one was Getting Social, which I assume will be about multi player in, in the position universe. Now I am taking notes on these. Unfortunately they're about an hour along each so I'm having to watch it and take notes at the same time so I will do a separate post in regards to what we heard there because there are some really really interesting points that we have not heard yet so stay tuned for that. That'll be sometime this week I expect. There was a new fan spotlight called Voice Attack Profiles Volume 2 and if you're interested in Voice Attack Profiles check that out. It'll give you an idea on, on how to do them or maybe even a download for them. Now CIG is returning to PAX East and also they're doing the South by Southwest and there's two posts again in the description all with the details of both events so if you can attend any or if you're planning to attend any that's where you need to read up and get the information you need and the final post was in regards to the RSI pledge store update and it's again to do with the VAT just explaining why it's coming and what's happened because now the prices unfortunately for all our, as Europeans have gone up so if you want to know more information about that again the links are in the description. So as you probably know, we were giving away the Mustang Delta game package this week and to enter you were asked to be a subscriber and follow us on Twitter and thank you to all who have entered. We started with 35 Twitter followers and it has rocketed to 160 so thank you very much for building that up. Now, not all these giveaways will involve Twitter, it is just one in like every five. It's just to spread it out over the social media because it was a bit shameful with 35 so don't worry, it's not going to be every week, just every now and again. And so we have a winner and the winner is, as always, drummer roll. Fuck. 313. Congratulations. You are now the proud owner of the Mustang Delta package. So for those who didn't win, we are carrying on the giveaway tradition thanks to our Mr. Robert, who is presenting us with all these ships. And this week we're giving away the fourth in the lineup of the Mustangs, which is the, the Gamma, the Mustang Gamma game package. It's one of the racing ships. We have one of two. You have the Omega and this is the Gamma. The, the Gamma's this week. It'll be the Omega given away next week. So with this game package, you get the ship, obviously, and three months insurance on that ship. You get the Southland hangar, which if you see my if you watch my ship reviews it is the hangar i use to do all those you get the digital star citizen manual beta access starting money of 1000 united earth credits the star citizen digital game download and squadron 42 single player game download so in order to win this you must be a subscriber to us and this week to show our appreciation to robert for providing us with all these ships to give away i want to see some gratitude for him in the comments so from a simple thank you to whatever you want to say as without him these giveaways would not be as frequent or as impressive so big shout out to robert thank you very much you'll have one week to get your comments in and we will announce the winner on next week's star citizen sunday so good luck Okay, so I just want to mention we have started a Patreon page to help with the costs of the videos we make. They are a labour of love, but with recurring fees for hardware and software and, and obviously lack of time, it's getting increasingly difficult now to keep up with the videos and do more. If you can pledge as little as $1 a month or whatever amount you're happy with, it will all go back into the YouTube channel to create better quality videos with more often. Don't worry if you don't want to or you can't pledge. You don't need to. You can still watch the videos as normal. It will just help us to improve what we do and, and add more. There is a link on the screen for about five seconds seconds and in the description we appreciate you watching our videos regardless week in week out so either way we love you all so that's it for this week's star citizen sunday thank you all for watching don't forget to subscribe for more star citizen content like the video if you will comment if you've got anything at all to say share it if you can and i shall see you in the verse